Okay, so um, what we're going to do here is spend just a little bit of time finishing up our discussion of non-Mendelian inheritance. Now, uh, since Moby is acting up uh, so much, what I decided to do was just uh, write out um, the information that you need to know uh, so that I could actually try and write a little bit better. Uh, as amazing as it seems, I actually had to go back and try and rewrite quite a bit of this because uh, I was having so much mo uh, trouble with Moby. Now, the first concept we're going to look at is uh, pleiotropy. What this means is that uh, a particular gene or one particular gene has uh, a many-fold impact on uh, characters uh, in an organism. So for example, uh, cystic fibrosis, just a single gene uh, produces a non-functioning protein, but the impact of that could be uh, wide-ranging. You know, it can have uh, everything from infertil infertility to uh, malnutrition to uh, chronic respiratory illness. Uh, as a result of one non-functioning uh, gene. Uh, it's the same with uh, sickle cell disease. Uh, again, a single non-functioning disease, or a single non-functioning gene results in uh, a multitude of uh, phenotypic effects. Now, epistasis, literally translated, means standing upon, and that's really an appropriate way to uh, consider this. Um, epistasis simply means that one gene is going to control the expression of a different gene uh, for a different character at a different locus. So, uh, for instance, uh, in the book they discuss uh, black and brown coat color and how uh, black may be dominant to brown, but there is another gene, a second gene, uh, at a separate locus uh, that's used for the deposition of those pigments. And if you inherit a recessive allele for that deposition gene, then it doesn't matter what the coat color genes may be, uh, you're not going to deposit uh, those colors uh, in the fur. So uh, again, the whole idea with epistasis is that one gene will actually control the expression of another. Okay, polygenic. Poly means many, genic simply referring to genes. And what they mean with that is that several genes or uh, many genes can have influence on a particular uh, trait. Uh, classic examples in humans include uh, height and skin color. So if you have a number of genes controlling a trait, in this instance we're uh, looking at the idea of skin color, Individuals or parents could pass on a, a number of different possibilities to their offspring. Now, you can have wide ranging uh, phenotypic effects uh, with this. So, for instance, uh, these two parents could pass on uh, nothing but recessive alleles to their offspring, in which case there'd be very little pigment produced and they'd have uh, very uh, lightly pigmented skin. Uh, at the same time, they could also pass on uh, a number of dominant alleles to their offspring resulting in uh, a large quantity of pigment production or melanin production and uh, the offspring could have a significantly darker skin. So polygenic inheritance uh, has a hallmark of um, variation. You know, looking at a uh, variety of possible phenotypes uh, again um, is characteristic of polygenic inheritance. And that finally leads us to the idea of nature versus nurture and this is one of the great debates uh, in biology. Looking at uh, the, the genome that a person possesses and considering the influence of environment on the expression uh, of those genes. And I think uh, a useful way to consider this is to be, or is to look at genes as uh, setting the parameters or potentials, uh, or setting the potential for um, phenotype. So genes sort of lay out what's possible. And then in many cases, the environment can actually uh, influence the expression uh, of those genes. Uh, height uh, certainly again is an example. So there are many genes that can control height, but there are other environmental factors uh, like malnutrition, uh, chronic disease, chronic stress, even uh, smoking can uh, influence the actual height uh, or the uh, you know, real height of the individual. So in these instances, uh, these are referred to as multifactorial characters. Those uh, characters that are influenced not only by genetics, but uh, by environmental factors uh, as well. So um, if you're looking for a, sort of a concrete um, way to think of this, think of playing cards. Now you can play uh, Euchre uh, as a, a popular game. You're dealt in each hand a particular set of cards. That could be like the genome that you receive. Now how you play that particular hand uh, is up to you. You know that's the strategy that you employ. So uh, look at that as being the environmental uh, or um, life experiences that a person has and how that influences the expression of those genes. 
Uh, so certainly our genes have influence over who we are, uh, but think of us as being more the sum of both our genes and our life experiences.